Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. So this week's video are some more shrimp room updates. As you can see, I'm sitting in the dark, really good illumination from the tanks. We've done a little bit of change into the shrimp room. We've got a little bit of a build of something midway through the video. And if I've got enough time and if they arrive in time before I need to publish this video, we should have some new shrimp as well. But keep, um, keep watching, see how we get on and let's get straight to the video. I wanted to do a, a small section on, on the use of um, this moss scapers glue. So this is the gel type, I saw the gel and the liquid, so the gel is really good for attaching stuff like plants. The liquid is really good for sort of building structure using um, bits of tissue paper or or cigarette filters if you've ever seen stuff done like that but we do sell this moss glue and I've already done a small piece of chala wood in one of the new tanks so let me just quickly show you that so in the rack the third rack I've got two two tanks set up and if you can just see I've glued a few pieces of booster philander onto that that somebody sent me and I do have another piece of booster, um, sorry, another piece of chala wood in the other tank, but that hasn't sunk yet, so I don't want to glue any any boost to that. Now I do have quite a few pieces of boost that I've had just resting in a tank that somebody sent me. And what I wanted to do was just go through the use of these and how I do this. So a couple of things I've got to hand. One of them is a pair of pincers. The other one, to excuse the mess in the background, but the other one is a spray bottle. Now with the chala wood, the chala wood was already wet because it was soaked and I like to glue on wet surfaces. So this is a piece of lava rock. I've got these in red and in black and they are sort of bored with a hole. So, so they're, they're pretty good for sort of shrimp climbing in and out a little hide. But what I want to do is I'll spray this down first you can wash these, I'm just, I'm just spraying them. And the only reason I'm spraying it is because with the glue, I like the glue to have a wet surface to stick to. And it is literally just a case of finding a piece of boost that you want to use. So if I use, this looks like quite a big piece actually. Let me see if I can, um, can sort of pull them. I want to try and separate them as much as I can. So this is quite a big piece of Busa philandra, this one. And this is the piece that I'm going to be attaching to that rock. I'm not sure what species. They were just sent me as a bundle by, by my good friend Rob. And the only sort of downside to cyanacrylate glue is it does leave white marks. So I literally just put a small spot on. And then as you can see, probably by my finger, I've already been gluing. So I've got glue on the finger and what sort of helps is all we're looking to do is anchor this down until it, it manages to create a root structure of its own. And it is literally a case of just holding that down. I, you know, you may get glue on your fingers. That's why I use the, the, the pincer. So I use the back end of the pincer sometimes to sort of hold that down. And I tend to sort of count to 10. And you'll, you'll probably find that it, that it just sticks and you'll know once it's stuck. So we'll give that a bit of a count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Doesn't always stick, but it looks like that one hasn't. And it may be that I just need to hold it a little bit longer. So now that we've got that piece stuck, that's probably going to take over that side of the rock. And I want to probably put something here as well. I could put something on the back, something on the front. But again, just a light spray. I literally just want to damp this down a bit. And I'll find another piece of boost or a couple of pieces of boost that I want to use. So I do have quite a bit in here. I'm probably going to... So as this is a side piece, I think what I'm going to do is use the piece that I've got in my hand. I'll show you in a second. And because we've already got a white mark there on that bit of rock anyway, so you don't need a lot. Last sages this does. I'm just going to remove a bit of moss that I found in there, which I don't want. And that 
may have soaked into I'm going to put another bit on because I've got a feeling that's actually soaked in so I want it so there's a bit of a blob on the surface there you go probably too much now it's probably going to run down and leave a white mark but it'll go over time it'll either get covered in algae or roots or or something so again same process just hold in place and this one I'm probably going to use the pincers as I mentioned and just hold it quite tight so it'll count to 10 or longer if you want to and that should hold in place and the bit, bits of glue that are left over will go white so I may, I've got quite a few bits of different booths, I may put one over the back over here as well. But if I do, we'll, I'll, I'll record that and we'll, we'll get that done as well. So I have decided to, one of the smaller leaf species, so you probably won't see this until it sort of covers. But that's not a bad thing because it's sort of hidden out the way. And I'm hoping that eventually this bit of rock will just be covered in booths. I mean, they're slow growers, they take sort of forever to grow, but, you know, it's, uh, you blink and they've grown, <laughs> like with everything in life. So this is the piece of boots. It is one of the smaller leaf species, and I tend to sort of just put it in, in place. I mean, that would probably do, but I do want to sort of just press it in so it gets more of a bite. All we're doing with the glue is we're giving the, the boots of philandra something to hold on to until the root structure establishes so I've got, still got quite a few bits of boots in, in my jug. I need to find something to put them on. So I do have um, another piece of chola. And the downside to chola is it does sort of break break down over time. But um, just just replant it, you know. Take the boots off if it sort of breaks down and replant it. it it'll just go forever type thing. We'll do the same with this red piece, although we have got quite a few smaller bits of boost to attach to this. So I found, I think, the one for this. So this is quite a small piece of boost. I've tried to get as much of the moss out of this as possible, and I'm not sure. I may stick this here, actually, because it's sort of branched, but as you can probably see, it's starting to sort of grow. I have a longer piece here. Um, with moss in it that I need to sort of take out. Let's get that bit of moss out. So I do have a bit of a longer piece here that may go well here. There may actually be two pieces just stuck together by a bit of moss. And I do want to try and take that moss off because I'm not a fan. So let's sort of start with this one. I do want to try and leave as much of the, the rhizome, the root structure on as possible. But I do literally just want somewhere to hold it. So a tiny bit of glue. Let's push that and hold that into place. If I can get my tweezers into action without them slipping out my hands. So that will do for that one. And then we need to have a think about how we're going to use the other pieces. So I do think that that would fit quite well here and work out where that's going to go. So I'm going to try a dry one actually and just see how much difference it makes. I've always done them wet, hence me doing them, doing them wet glue in my hands to them usually. But I think the water activates the glue. So there you go, that's sort of held in place. It hasn't fully set but it will sort of set and cure over time. And then up on the top I will spray just because I like I prefer it if it's sort of damp and that's just the way I like it. But so I've got a nice piece here as well which I think would sort of go well here. And if we drop a bit of glue there, and then push that in, 
push this piece into place and just get it to sort of sit into that. And then we've got loads of little bits that I need to just try and sort of scatter all over the place, I suppose. Just want to use them up, if I'm honest. And we'll do another piece here. On the side. So if they've got a bit of rhizome and a bit of root on, they will sort of come back. They take forever to grow, it suppose. But they, as I mentioned earlier, they, they do go, you know, eventually they'll just take off and once they start to get established, they get established and water conditions are right, they'll grow. Okay, so that's that one in place. Again, I've got another tiny bit of rhizome here, but as you can see, there are tiny leaves on there. So I'm thinking to put that here somewhere, maybe. literally just want to try and use these up might put a bit too much glue there yeah definitely put too much glue there so let's get a bit of tissue and try and take some of that off it is going to leave a nice white mark that is but it'll go it'll go over time so let's see if we can get that to, to hold this time. It's going to stick to my finger, this one. And that's slightly out of shot. So there we go. It has got it. So sometimes you have to sort of just persevere a little bit and sort of work away with them. But I've got a few little small pieces left. I need to find, I need to try and find something to use these pieces on. You can see them down the, down the right hand side here, but I'll, uh, I'm probably going to wait. I'm probably going to save them in a bit of water and wait till the other bit of chollas sunk and stick those onto the chola. If you don't have glue and you use chola wood, you can actually sort of poke, poke them into the little holes in the chola, and that works as well, but I, I prefer to glue, especially on rock, obviously. It's been a good few days since I did the video section on the Booster Philander and putting the Booster Philander on. So just a bit of an update. We've done some changes to the to the rack with the frogs on. So what we've done is we've again put these plastic covers on. I do need to paint and I put one on the side. And what I've done temporarily is I've moved all the pods that were down there onto this shelf here. And I've completely finished with the, the booses now. So if we just sort of have a look round, that one's got a piece of chola with some boose on the rock. And then this one's got similar. So these are ready to take, take shrimp. Notice that there's some big white sections on that rock. And those are sort of darken over time. They'll either grow over or they'll get bits of um, algae on and stuff but same in here really I've got boosts that seem to be perked up and doing well on that bit of chola wood and I've got a few over on this rock I don't know what types of boosts they are which is a shame because it's always worth knowing and then pretty much everything else that we've done so still waiting for frogs in here and the frogs that I wanted for in here are currently out of stock I have emailed Dark Frogs UK to see if he's going to get any more or if they're breeding and when they're going to come back in stock so we'll have to wait and see on that frogs are doing really well shrimp are doing really well and then the only other thing really that I can sort of update you on at this point in time is that today we're getting some bigger enclosures for the the spiders so they're in micro enclosures at the moment and personally i think they're being stressed being in such small enclosures do need to change the name and i'm thinking actually to do something sort of slightly different in here so what i'm thinking of doing i do need to sort of get this done is where we've got these posters up this wall 
what I wanted to do was to take those posters off and double-sided tape them to the ceiling so utilize that space and then build a little shelving system that's heated with heat cable here uh, I know it's behind the sink so I need to be careful how, how I run my electrics I'll probably run them at height so run my electrics up up here somewhere uh, I might even be able to sort of tap into the electrics that are already there and put a plug socket high but I have to wait and see and have a look at that so today I'm waiting for the new spider enclosures uh, I won't tell you what they are because I'll actually video those we've got a bit of a glut of flies at the moment as well for for food so one of those is some fruit flies here and if I just tap that you'll see what I mean you see how many flies are in there so that one's doing well and I've done something whereby I I've got a few on the go at once and I'm trying something new so at the moment I'm using wood wool, which works but when you tap them out it sort of drops into where you've tapped them out and it does or it tends to go mouldy I'm trying this corrugated paper, so I've got a couple on the go there, and we finally managed to get the green bottles to hatch. Uh, I have put an apple core in there, but I've ordered some jelly pots to feed those up until when I need those, and like buses, they all come out at the same time. So it's just a little update for sort of midweek. I do need to do a bit of painting in here and tidy up, and I'll update you guys as we go. But the room's looking quite nice now. Frogs up there. Uh, I'm still not sure if I'm going to keep the isopods on that rack, but um, it makes more sense to have two less tanks and a bit more storage because I've lost the rack out of here. So, unless I can do something with the other rack in and make that sort of work better for me, but that's a bit of an update for now, anyway. Just to add to that, then, something I didn't cover, but we, we've obviously done this is down here we've got this, um, we've built a little stand for the AC unit just to pop it up a bit higher so it drains better and I literally just knocked that up out of a bit of chipboard that's the sprayer I'm using at the side of that and one of the things we've done then is I'll just pull this out so we did make another one um, the markings on this still needs to be painted this but the markings on these are to put a frame around the outside so just, um, just like a thin bead of timber uh, along those lines so that the wheels of the AC unit fit in that. And then what I've done is I'll just bend down and just want to show you that is we've put wheels on and brought it up to the same height. So once the wheels are in there, I'll be able to sort of pull that out and move that around a bit better. And it's just sort of little things add into the room and stuff like that. I think when I finally get everything completed as well underneath these cupboards i will put a face plate on as well so if i've got the spider out or anything you can't run under cupboards and if it jumps off i don't you know i'm less likely to, to to lose one of the spiders if i've got them out haven't handled any of them yet but i am planning on trying to sort of do that today um, i will record that if i do and uh, as i move them into their new new enclosures that's what i want to try and record sort of handling of those but just a little update so if you made it this far well done and i hope i haven't bored you too much i just wanted to put a big shout out to all of those that subscribe and the followers and stuff i wanted to mention that we have set up a patreon page i'm only starting at sort of one pound a month on the patreon if you want to become a member and help support the channel we looked at some statistics and we noticed that 83 percent of people that watch our videos aren't subscribers but 83 percent if they were to subscribe would make a massive massive difference to the channel and it would help us to sort of continue and keep going and trying to work out and find new content for you guys so if you're not a subscriber already please please hit that subscribe button it makes a massive difference to the channel helps us to grow if you want to support the channel you can always support the channel by buying stuff off us at gbshrimp.co.uk website we only ship to the uk so apologies if you're watching from the us or anywhere else in the world likewise you can join our patreon channel 
Um, I've only got one one level of membership at the moment because I'm trying to figure out what I could offer you guys in addition to what I already do from the channel perspective, you know, one or two videos a week. Obviously, I can give you guys that support me a shout out and we can sort of work towards, you know, what I can offer you guys as Patreon. So if you want to become a Patreon member, I'll put the link in the description below. That's um, a fungus nut that's just cracked off on the on the fly executor zapper machine. So apologies for that crack if you heard that bang. And let's get to the next part of the video, which is building the new spider enclosures and rehousing those. So if you're into that, Stay tuned, and we've probably got a bit at the end for, for everyone else. Thanks, guys. Our new spider enclosures have arrived, so this is me just unpacking them, working out which piece goes where, laying them out accordingly, and trying to figure out how to put this together. After removing all the cellophane protection, I work out which is the centre and the back pieces, so these are in black, work out where all the other pieces fit and apologies for this being off camera a little bit and put the top on, put the front bottom piece on, both of the sides making sure that I have the holes for the door pointing towards the front of the enclosure and then likewise with the doors there's a large tab and a small tab and the small tab goes towards the centre. Finally, we need to have a look at putting the elastics on. So there are large and small elastics that fit the, the relevant pieces. I'm just going around filling in the elastics where they need to go, small on the small and obviously large on the large. Once those are on, it's just a case of fitting the catches. So these simply go on with a nut and bolt, little Allen key, and I tighten these up off camera. As you can see, these are double enclosures. I've got two of them. So I'll show you the other one in a second once I've built it. And this gives me four, four housings. So here's the two, and we just need to now go and decorate those, put substrate in and move our spiders in. What I'm aiming to achieve with this build is I want to make the substrate bioactive. So I'm literally just using the same substrate that I would use for my isopods. And I will add spring towels to this to break down. I'll probably try and take some of the bigger pieces out. So I'm just pulling some of this from the pot out of shot. But I am trying to make this as bioactive as possible. So I do have cultures of spring towels that I will use as well. Now when I ordered these, I could have had the bottom of the door section here. This bottom section in black as well. But I thought it would be nice because I can then see through quite easily how moist the substrate is. And if I need to sort of add a bit of moisture to that so I'm not putting shed loads in literally just a small layer and then what I'm going to do with this one is I, I quite like the orchid bark but I think I'm going to use sphagnum moss in this one so as I say not not piles and I'll try and keep some of the bigger pieces of leaves and stuff out. And then I will add some spring tiles to these these substrates as well. So they'll help break down the, the waste. So let's get my little spring tile culture out and we'll actually do that on camera. So I'll keep a few tubs of spring tiles just to top up the terrariums and stuff and the pod tubs for that matter so I don't need loads just sort of half a scoop and these 
these are my springtail cultures going in or my springtail culture and now they'll, they'll sort of breed and populate and do what they need to do just gonna add a few more in actually okay so that's my springtails added and then the only other thing I really want to do here, and this is just to try and help it keep moisture, is I want to ha add some sphagnum moss. So this is dried sphagnum moss at the moment, and I'm, I'm not sort of aiming to cover this. Just keep sort of a bit of a, a humidity, a bit of a humid area. And it adds a, a bit of eye candy to the enclosure too. And gives the spider something to explore as well. So I'm not too worried if it covers. I don't really, not really bothered about that. So that's our substrates in. This will damp down and, and go flat as well. And the next thing I want to do is add some decor. So at the moment I've only got some sticks that I can use. And I'm going to get, I think, some magnetic ledges and stuff. I did think about using little cork ledges and making some cork ledges and actually pinning them onto the sides so I do have some black pins that I can use so maybe I can use some of the cork from the existing enclosures once I've moved the spiders and what I'm, what I'm sort of talking about here is this piece as an example if I sort of pin that from the side and it just gives the spider something to explore if I make them a little bit longer, I could actually put casters and stuff on there. So as they as they hatch, the flies are ready in the enclosure. But so I'll, I'll have a plan, see what we can come up with. So I put a few sticks in here. I'm not perfectly happy with them. Um, I've taken them out of my one of my isopod tubs. They are lichen sticks. They were absolutely covered in. No isopods, although I've just stuck an isopod out there in springtails. Um, and, and because they were absolutely covered in springtails, I thought they'd be absolutely perfect to to use. And where I was sort of talking about this shelf, I've got these little black pins. And I think potentially I could, using this bit of cork, I could make a little shelf just by pushing these pins in and that sort of fits quite nice. Now, I know this isn't flush and I'm just messing around at the moment. So let's find some other decor. I'd love to put some artificial plants of some type in there but I don't have any at the moment. So I'm sort of a bit reluctant to, to put anything in there but just to sort of try and brighten that up a bit. Maybe a little plastic plant a little vine or something like that just to sort of brighten it up a bit but for now we'll just continue with sticks and stuff bit annoyed to be honest because I thought I was recording and I didn't record putting Philippa in here so she's found herself up the back corner not looking too pleased but much nicer home for her I've put a little shelf made out of cork on the side. I have sprayed this. I've misted this lightly at the moment. I did have... she. I didn't handle her to bring her in. She she come out of the one box into the other. But just give you an idea of the difference in size between the micro and these ones. She's got a lot more room and there's a bit of ventilation at the back, although there's ventilation in the micro. But I think she'll be a lot happier in there and maybe we can sort of build some trust with her and get her to, you know, start trusting us and coming out and stuff and get over my fear of spiders <laughs> more than anything. But uh, next job is going to be fun. So I'm going to try and get Luton into this one. So wish me luck. Change of plan then. We put the Bahamas in here and I put food in and she's straight onto a fly, which is really good. So it took a bit of coaxing to get in. If if I can remember, sorry, I'm shaky as anything here. If I can remember, I'll put uh, a bit of video in of me trying to sort of get her in. Well, I was trying to make friends with her, actually. So I might put that in at the end. But she's got a green bottle fly, which is good. And likewise, 
Philippa has also got a green bottle fly and if I just try and sort of show you from the top if I can focus which I probably won't she's down there and Philippa's up here anyway so apologies for not focusing it's much better if you actually got them out of the acrylic enclosures but nice little enclosures these so next step then is I'm going to redo the name tags and we'll put the name tags on and change Bahamas to what what she should be and then I've started building the enclosures on the other two so I'll put a shelf in again I quite like the idea of this cork and what I've done is I've literally just used a couple of they're not drawing pins they're actually furniture pins so hopefully they won't cause any problems on I'll check out what they're made up of and stuff but we'll get these done and then we'll get them into this enclosure for now and as I said the plan is long term that I'm going to actually build a shelf here and put probably three doubles of these on and see how we go from there So that brings us to the end of this week's video. Unfortunately, my shrimp didn't arrive in time. What I did want to mention, though, is we've got a special offer on the moment. On at the moment, so we've reduced all of our shrimp lollies. Um, they're in the clearance section on gbshrimp.co.uk. So we've got we've got some good clearance offers on there at the moment. Shrimp lollies are all perfect. I've just decided to do a special on those for the moment. So they're normally ranging between six forty nine a pack and six ninety nine a pack. They're down to 4 dollars a pack, so grab those while you can. And then, until next week.